And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a king wearing a magnificent crown. No, Dad, that's not it. Oh, really? L let me try it again. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a powerful, well-trained soldier. No, Dad, you did it again. That's not right. Okay, uh, how about this? And this will be a sign for you. You will find a democratically elected president. What? No. A trendy motivational speaker. No way. A big tech CEO. A movie star. Time traveling cyborg. Of those are right. The shepherds weren't going to find any of those. Okay then, little Miss Know-It-All. What did they find? For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. Oh, that's right, a baby. Does that even make sense? A, a baby is totally helpless. Yeah, but if Jesus didn't come as a baby, mm -hmm. then he would have known what it was like to grow up. Ah, but wait. Why did he have to grow up? That's easy. To save us. Ah, well then that means that the best part about Christmas is... The baby. Right, the baby. Oh, well, I guess it's time you get some sleep. We got a big day ahead of us tomorrow. No, we're not done with the story. Okay, just a little longer. And suddenly, there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he was. To honor him. 
Christmas at Grace. I'm so glad you're joining us here in Paradise. Those joining us online today is going to be an incredible time to celebrate I'm, together. I'm glad y'all get to see us. I'm Chris. Look at good. Chris, I'm Pastor Rocky. We're the best looking pastors here, so they put us up on the stage. Rocky. And, uh, so, <laughs> Rocky, anyway. Rocky, I'd say your outfit suits you well. Are you saying that I'm most likely to be voted Santa Claus? No, no uh, it's... No. Okay, okay. All right, let's go. All right. Anyway, hey, we are so glad that you're here. If you're watching online, thank you for being here. Let us know where you're watching from. And uh, if you are new to Grace Fellowship, we want to say thank you for giving us a part of your weekend. And we want to say uh, we appreciate you guys. If you are here live and uh, for one reason or another, you invited by a family member, a friend, or you just came because it was Christmas kind of weekend, we have a gift for you. We'd love for you to swing by the hub on your way out. This bag just looks like this has a um, Starbucks card, some candy, fun stuff like that. We'd love to put that in your hand. Um, if you are new here, we'd love to make it as easy as possible for you to find out how you can get connected here at Grace. We'd, we'd love to connect with you. Um, and and uh, the easy way, if you're here in Paradise, you can always stop by the hub on your way out. But, but a way that we've tried to make it easy for everyone is just to text the letters VIP to 940-242-2212. And what we'll do is we'll send you a link with just information on how you can get connected uh, here at Grace. We'd love to help you do that, answer any questions you may have uh, along the way. If, if you're watching from home, the, the uh, host, online host, will pin a link for you to let us know uh, there at the top of the chat box. Um, Grace is an extremely generous church, and if you consider Grace your home and you would like to give today, there's several different options for you. One, you can go to gf.church slash give, or you can use the Church Center app, or if you're live, you can drop it off in the generosity box as you leave. Today, we're going to celebrate Christmas together, and I want to invite you just to relax and enjoy our time together. Our prayer is that regardless of what kind of worries or stress or, or frustrations you walked in here with, that today you'll leave with hope that comes from the greatest gift ever given at Christmas. And hey, Grace Fellowship, would you stand to your feet? We're going to worship our King, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the one who's on the throne, the one who came for us. Come on, let's sing. While shepherds kept their watching on silent flocks by night, behold, throughout the heavens there shone a holy light. Come on, put your hands together like this.
It was that silent night when the stars turned their gaze to marvel at the earth. When the heavens gathered breathless round a lowly stable. When a young mother wept tears of worship, falling on the baby in her arms. And the song of the earth arose in Bethlehem soft as the tender beating of his heart and all was calm all was bright yet could this be the same god of abraham the conqueror of israel this baby this fragile life is this child the one who burned his name in rapture across the gasping skies whose voice spoke the oceans into crashing rhythms who crafted the mountains into guardians of the firmament, whose hand ignited the thirst of the deserts and the warring surge of the elemental hosts, who breathed life from dust, broke the oppressor's rule, scattered the chains of his people like sand, and led them through the wilderness with a pillar of flame. Is this child 
of the one whose presence billowed thunderous on Sinai's peak, who surrounded Job with the roaring wind, stood defiant in the raging furnace, wrote judgment against tyrants, and blazed on the lips of the prophets, scorching history's pages with the fury of his might. Could this be the same God who chose to come as the vulnerable king, setting his throne on straw and manger, drawing forth the tears of shepherds, receiving the gifts of wandering travelers, his fame unknown in this world. He is Jesus, the one who thunders through the heavens, yet whispers to our hearts, who reigns victorious, yet bows to serve the broken. He is God in the fury, God in the silence. He holds this mystery balanced in his hands, holds our questions till they lose their need, until all we see is him. to babe on bended knee the savior of humanity unto us a child is born he shall reign forevermore no
Well, good morning. Merry Christmas. Man, hasn't the music been absolutely incredible today? I mean, wow. I mean, it has been in, it's just incredible. And, and we're so glad that you're here with us today. Those of you that are here in our Paradise campus, those of you that are watching online, man, we love connecting with you all over the nation, actually all over the world, and hope you'll engage with the online host. You know, the songs that we've been singing really are about what Christmas is all about, that we can find hope and peace and joy through this baby that was born. It became Christ our Savior. And so I hope you understand that and know what that is. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about it today. And we're wrapping up a series called Home for the Holidays today. That's what we've been talking about over the past few weeks. It's been absolutely uh, an incredible series. If you missed any part of it, I hope you'll go back and watch it. You can do that at gf.church slash watch. And, you know, for many of us, uh, going home for the holidays has these warm, fuzzy memories, right? We have all these things that we love and remember. And then for some of us, it's not the most wonderful time of the year. In fact, it can be a very difficult time. And in this series, what we've been talking about is how to have hope and how to have peace and how to have joy at Christmas and beyond. So we're going to continue with that today. And, and as we talk about being home for the holidays, I don't know about in your family, but in mine, one of our favorite things to do is to watch some movies that we get to watch year after year after year. We all have our favorites, right? I mean, I'm sure you do and we do. In fact, I did a social media poll several weeks ago asking about your favorite movies and you know how accurate social media is. But anyhow, uh, but, but I did this and I got a lot of responses and you're not really going to be surprised by this, but the number one response of a favorite movies when you go home for the holidays was what? Elf. I mean, who doesn't like watching Elf? I mean, what a great, great movie. What a lot of fun to watch. The second movie was, this surprised me a little bit, Home Alone. I mean, it's an old one, but it's still funny. Now, Janet and I, my wife and I, we watched it again a couple of weeks ago, and we remembered watching it with our children, and when we watched it this time, we thought, oh my goodness, there are things in there probably they shouldn't have seen. You know, that's just the way it is. The third movie was The Grinch, which that's, that's a great movie. And, and we showed the other day here at the church, had a lot of fun with that. Number four surprised me. It, it's this, It's a Wonderful Life. How many of you like watching that movie? Anybody enjoy that movie still? Not too many. All right. Well, that's okay. Did you know that that movie will be 75 years old next year? And it's still a classic, like by so many people. In fact, we had not watched it fully all the way through in a long time we did this year and absolutely loved it again. And then, of course, the fifth one, you know, you got to watch Christmas Vacation, right? I mean, it's just got so much funny stuff in it. Now, there was a movie that didn't make your top five, but it was in the, the top movies. In fact, it was pretty high. got a lot of recommendations, and it was this. I don't know if you've seen it or not, but Christmas with the Cranks, right? It's, it is so funny. It is a great movie, and, and, and if you don't know the story, the lead characters there, Luther and Nora Crank, okay, they're going to be alone for the first Christmas ever. Their daughter Blair joined the Peace Corps. She's gone, and they're going to skip Christmas. And, and what they've done is they have opted for, and they're hoping to go on a Caribbean cruise and not have anything to do with Christmas this year until, well, just check it out for yourself, okay? Man, I tell you, if, if you get a call like that, you just know how you're going to respond, like one of them did for sure. And it absolutely changed what they were hoping for, right? I mean, for Luther and Nora, I mean, their hope was just this wishful thinking that they were going to get to go on a cruise. And then that got sabotaged because something else came up. Uh, for those of us who are like Blair, though, you know, for her, hope was a little different. Hope, hope was... Uh, was kind of like a dream. It was her dream that everything would be great. Everything would be just like she pictured it and imagined it. It would be like it used to be with all the stuff that went on and it would meet her expectations. But the reality is, and what we're going to talk about today, is that hope is so much more than wishful thinking, dreams, or even blind optimism. In fact, hope is that thing that can give you joy and peace and light no matter what your circumstances are, whether they're bad or they are good. So we're going to look at that just a little bit uh, today. Now, I, I want to ask you this question because we're talking about hope and all of us have different experiences, especially around the holidays. But has there ever been a time where hope became dim for you? Or maybe you actually lost it 
and it was a difficult and dark time for you. I, I know I have been there. And we're going to talk about that a little bit today and how you get through that, how you overcome it. But when I, when I think about going home for the holidays for me, home for the holidays for me usually was a great time. In fact, uh, my mind, when I think about going home for the holidays to my, my parents and, and, and our home, even with our grandkids and being there, it's usually filled with good memories, even, even the first Christmas after we lost my dad uh, to cancer. Now, don't get me, get me wrong. Um, that was one of the most difficult Christmases so far in our family. Uh, it was difficult for me to look at my mom, my mom to look at me, me and my wife to look at each other, our kids. You know, we, we would just, you know, there at their house, look at each other, and our, our eyes would well up with tears because we were missing something that we had held dear. We were missing my dad, and that's a normal thing at Christmas. And so that Christmas definitely was, was difficult, and there were a lot of tears. But I still had hope during that Christmas that filled me with peace and with joy and with light. And, and going home for the holidays for me was always a fun time. And it was a time filled with hope, especially being around my dad. And, and none of you knew him. But my dad was a guy, he was a very kind person. He was very generous. He had a, he had a positive spirit that was amazing. And, and he had this great wisdom. I just love sitting down and talking to him. And I mean, I mean, today I wish I could give him a phone call once in a while and just talk to him because he had incredible wisdom that came from years of experiences and many years of following Jesus. And, and again, while we cried many tears and it was a difficult uh, Christmas, I still had hope that filled me with peace and, and joy and light that Christmas. But a few months earlier, that hope was a wall. A few months earlier, as we were walking through cancer with him before he passed, it, it was difficult. I mean, hope was actually uh, gone from me. It was something that just um, it kind of evaporated. And, and, and I know everybody has different opinions about their father. Some of you have had a great relationship with your dad. Some of you have not. And so it's different when you talk about dads and family and all that. But for me, my dad was my hero. And we didn't have a real close relationship when I was younger, but as we got older, we became very, very close and could share just about anything. And, as, and I think about my dad, and I think about who he was, and, and I look at him. I'm, I'm being very honest with you. If you went back to his hometown and interviewed tons of people that knew him, they'd tell you the same thing. My father was a great man. And he was a great man because he was a man of character and integrity. I mean, that's what people knew him for, for his honesty. And the way he served people, no matter who they were, it was absolutely inspiring. He was just that kind of guy. He was the kind of man that made life better for you, even if you didn't know him. And the reason for that is because he had a genuine love for God, and he had a genuine love for people, and he just loved life. I mean, that's the kind of man he was. And so when we found out that he had cancer, man, we did everything we could for him. We took him everywhere we could. We had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people praying for him, and we believed that he was going to get better. But he didn't. It got worse. And as you know, he passed away before that Christmas. And for me, that was a time that was one of the darkest times in my life. And when my dad did not get better, the things that began to happen in me, and, you know, I, I'm a pastor, and I'm supposed to know all these answers and have hope and all that. But I'm telling you, inside I was angry, and I was hurting, and I was frustrated, and I didn't get it. And I began to have some incredible doubts about the goodness of God that I preached about all the time. And, 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 and I began to think things like you would. I mean, we all rationalize when it happens to us, right? I began to think all kinds of things. And I was thinking, but, but God, my dad is an incredible man. And, and I could tell you all kinds of men that don't even measure up to the kind of man he is. I mean, why in the world is this happening to him? I mean, he, he, he's the kind of guy that most people want to be like. I mean, I don't get it. I don't understand where you are in this. He's a man who has this incredible inner strength and he, he's strong not only in, in his inner person, but physically, he's a, he's a strong man. And yet this cancer crushed him, and it was excruciating what he went through. I remember um, I, I got to spend quite a bit of time with him in the last couple of months. 
I remember going with him to some procedures that he had to have done just to help him have some normal body functions. And as he would have those procedures done, I would hold his hands. He had these, these create, he, he was such a craftsman and so good. And, and he had these leather-like hands. And I would grasp his hand and hold it. And he would squeeze as he went through excruciating pain, even with the stuff that they gave him. And I remember I'd have to turn my head away so he could not see my eyes that were filling with tears. Because this man that I loved was suffering so much, and I didn't get it. I I just, I, I didn't get it. And I had to do things for my father, and, and, and I hope you never go through this, but I had to do things for him during that time that I can't even talk about here. And they were humiliating for him, and it was heartbreaking for me. I mean, literally broke my heart. Now, I, during that time, I tried to be strong for my mom. I, I tried to be strong for my family, you know, because that's what I'm supposed to do. But I'm telling you, inside, I was broken. And I was hurting and hope was a wall. I mean, it just, I was lacking hope. And I would sneak into a back bedroom in my parents' home uh, away from everybody else and shut the door. And I'd crawl up into a bed. I'd put my, my face in a pillow and I'd just begin to scream and cry. And pound the fist, or pound, not the fist, but pound the bed with my fist. And, 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 uh, I just cried to God, God, I don't get it. Why? Why my dad? Why him? Again, there are so many other people that you could take. Why why is this going on with him? It doesn't make any sense to me, God. I mean, God, he loves you. He serves you. He serves people. He serves your church. And why him? I I love you and I serve you. And this is happening to him. And and I know, where are you in all this? It does not make sense. And it was a time of incredible darkness for me and a time of despair and where hope just seemed to vanish. And it was something that I hope that you never have to experience with any of your loved ones, ever. But the truth is, is that all of us at some point in our life are going to go to a time or go through a time whenever we struggle with this whole concept of hope. And we're tempted to give up on it and where we lose that glimmer and where it's a wall and it's missing in our life. In fact, I believe right now that hope is largely missing in our culture today. I mean, as a culture, we're more angry and divided than we've ever been in history. We can't even be civil with one another when we talk or when we say things about different people, maybe that we disagree with. And and, and for me, I, I think many of us are deeply concerned about the social and the moral and the political landscape of our nation. And the truth is, we could all just use a little hope. Wouldn't you agree? We just need a little hope. And it may surprise you. But when Jesus was born, things weren't terribly different. Things were not terribly different. Because when Jesus was born, he was born into a country or a nation where there was incredible political unrest, social unrest, religious unrest. In fact, oppression was the theme of the day. Distrust was the theme of the day because when Rome had conquered that nation and Israel and the parts of the Middle East that they ran, I mean, when they came in, they crucified thousands of men. Before Jesus was ever born, they crucified men for all kinds of reasons. And and, and, and the people of God that lived there in, in Jerusalem and in Israel, they lived under a brutal and murderous tyrant by the name of Herod and the taxes were ridiculously high and there were no civil rights at that time. And while we love to think about Christmas as being a time of light, which I love. Don't you love the lights? I mean, I have loved the lights and the songs today. I love the decorations. I love driving around looking at Christmas lights. Light's one of my favorite things at Christmas. And while we love to celebrate light at Christmas, the truth of the matter is that on the night that Jesus was born and in the time that he was born, it was not a time of light. But in fact, it was one of the times of greatest darkness ever for the people of God. 700 years before Jesus was born, there was a prophet by the name of Isaiah. And God inspired Isaiah to begin to write down words about the birth of a child. 
And in Isaiah 9, he starts by saying this, yet in the future, Galilee will be filled with glory. Galilee, where Jesus did his ministry, right? So yet in the future, Galilee will be filled with glory. And the people who walk in darkness shall see, shall see I can speak right in a minute, right? shall see a great light. They're going to see a great light. And then, and then what happens is, is Isaiah went on and he began to, to, to write about this further in chapter 9. If you go read it, he, he writes all these different prophecies about this child that would be born. And it's amazing when you go read them and that they were accomplished and they took place. But there would be a baby that would be born and, and he would be called the Prince of Peace, the Savior, the Messiah, Christ the Lord. It was, I mean, it was just absolutely incredible. And then when you go forward to the New Testament, you've got the man named Luke. Luke was a guy that spent a lot of time with the eyewitnesses that saw the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. And, and he wanted to write an accurate account of Jesus' life. And Luke 2 is where we have the Christmas story. And you remember it. We've sung about it tonight. You've heard part of it read tonight. That on the night that Jesus was born, that there were some shepherds. They were out in a field near Bethlehem tending the flocks. And then the angel of God appeared in front. And it was like, whoa, glory. Him, right? I mean, light so bright, it frightened them. It scared them to death. If an angel showed up at your house tonight and did that, you'd be scared too, wouldn't you? <laughs> we would be. We'd be shaking in our boots. They were shaking in their sandals. I mean, they were scared to death. And the reality is this, another reason they were scared, and we've already talked about it in this series, but here's what I want you to get. Many times our manger scenes have the wrong depiction of the shepherds because the truth is, the reality is, is that most of the shepherds around there at that time were between the ages of 10 and 14 year old. And they were boys who had been orphaned. Most of them. Their fathers had been crucified or killed by Rome. And then once that happened, the mothers, their mothers and their sisters were taken into Roman households to be household slaves. And the boys, these young boys were left just to fend for themselves, to try to make do, to try to even survive. And many of them would hire themselves out to someone that owned sheep and do the lowest job considered in that nation, which was being a shepherd. So these were young boys who lived in a time of great darkness and they had no hope, none. It had been taken away from them. And yet they were the first to hear about the birth of Jesus, the good news about Jesus' birth. And not only did the glory of God, I mean, fill the night with splendor, but the message of the angel filled them with hope. Look what Luke wrote. He said to him again, the angel said this, don't be afraid. We all need that kind of reassurance. <laughs> don't be afraid. He said, I bring you the most joyful news ever announced. I mean, this is the greatest news in all of history. And here it is. And it's for everyone, not just for a few people, not for some select people, not just for, you know, people fit in a certain cat. It's for everyone, all right? And here it is, the Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord has been born tonight in Bethlehem. I'm telling you, that was good news for these boys. It was good news for these shepherds. In fact, the truth is, is that while they had a Jewish heritage and they grew up with that heritage, they knew stories about a Messiah that would come and he would change everything. And so it gave them a glimmer of hope. And the angel was very clear that God's offer of peace and his offer of joy and his offer of hope was for anyone. It was for everyone who would trust what God was doing through this child the Savior, this Messiah who is Christ the Lord. These young boys, these shepherds now had a glimmer of hope. They realized they had not been forgotten, that they mattered, and that God knew their plight. And even though their circumstances wouldn't probably change in what they did in their life, they could have hope. Because hope was found in a person, in a baby, in the Messiah, the Prince of Peace, the Christ that had been born. And so our, our key takeaway that I want us all to get during this Christmas season is right here. That even in our darkest night, hope in Jesus brings peace joy, and light. Would you say it with me? Even in our darkest night, hope in Jesus brings peace, 
joy, and light. Listen, I, I, want, I want you to know this about my father. As he knew that he was uh, dying and there was no hope save a miracle of God, um, he had hard times. He had times when he was down and depressed, and mainly that was because he cared about me and my mom and our family and wanted to keep taking care of us. But the reality of his life was simply this. He also had hope. He had hope that filled him with joy. It gave him peace and it gave him life. And the reason is because as a 17-year-old young man, right before he went into the Navy in World War II, he went to a revival. And at that revival, he gave his heart to Jesus Christ. He chose to trust and follow Jesus. And I'm telling you that even in those last days, my dad was so certain of the presence of God in his life. And he was so certain of the promises of God. And I was too. And even though we missed him greatly on that Christmas, listen, my life was filled with hope, joy, peace, and light because of the promises that we could claim, the promises of Jesus. In fact, I want to say to you, no matter how dark your situation may seem and no matter what your circumstances are, you can have hope in spite of your darkness. And there's a guy by the name of Paul in the first century. And this guy Paul knew about darkness because he was someone who violently persecuted followers of Jesus. One of them imprisoned or killed. And then he became a follower of Jesus because he had an eyewitness encounter, a personal encounter with Jesus after Jesus was raised from the dead. Paul was a Jewish guy. He knew about the Messiah. He just didn't believe in Jesus until he met him. And then he realized this guy, Jesus, is legit. He is God and he is Lord. And Paul became a follower of Jesus Christ. And before he was murdered and martyred for his faith, he wrote much of what's preserved for us in the New Testament. And this key verse from Romans 15, 13 is kind of our key for this whole series and for today. And it's one of my favorites. And he said this. He said this to the people he was writing to, all the believers in Rome and beyond, and to us. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and in peace, in believing, that is through your faith, your faith in Jesus, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you will abound in what? Say it with me, hope and overflow with confidence in his promises that you won't just have a little glimmer of hope or a speck of hope, but you can actually abound in hope. And what you can do is you can overflow with confidence in his promises. Well, what promises are you talking about? The promises of scripture. We have them throughout the New Testament. They've been preserved for us. And one of the greatest is found in John 3, 16, a verse familiar to many who follow Jesus. I don't know if you've heard it or not, but if you have or haven't, why don't you read it with me? Here's what it says. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. What an incredible promise. And that promise gained even new significance for me as we walked through this time with my dad. That promise and others like Isaiah 41, 10, I think, they just gained new significance for me. Because in that process, as God began to work in my heart and life, just like he was in my dad, my focus shifted from my pain and my despair to God's presence and his promises. And in that promise, you know what that promise says to me? You know why I can have hope that is filled with peace and joy and light? It's because of this. I can never be separated from Jesus, ever. And if you're a follower of Jesus, you can never be separated from Jesus, not in this life or the life to come. Why? Because we have the promise of everlasting life. And beyond that for me, I gain hope that gave me peace, joy, and light as it came to my dad. Because here is a reality I want you to see. I will only be separated from my dad once. Once. And when I see him again, and I will, it'll be forever. The angels that first Christmas told the shepherds this, glory to God in the highest heaven. And then they sang, and peace on earth for all those, say it with me, pleasing him. In other words, you will have peace and joy and hope and light if you are in a position where you please him. Well, how in the world do you please God? There's only one way. There's only one way to please him and to have hope, and that's by putting your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Paul said it this way in Romans 5.1. He said, we have been made right with God because of our 
faith. And so we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So what does it mean to have faith? Faith is not just knowing about Jesus and believing that he existed, but faith is literally trusting him. It is relying upon him. It is choosing to follow him. It is believing that he died on the cross for your sins and that he was raised from the dead that proved he was God and Lord and that you know he's the only one that can forgive you and give you the gift of eternal life. He's the only way for you to experience that. In fact, Paul went on and said this, through faith, faith in Jesus, we've received God's grace, which is incredible, and we are full of joy because of the hope we have of sharing in God's glory. Well, how in the world do you share in God's glory? Only through Jesus. Only through Jesus. And we do it now as we grow in a relationship with Him, and ultimately, you and I will share in His glory as we spend eternity with Him in heaven if we put our faith and trust in Him. And I'm telling you, for me, what I came to understand is that this hope was the anchor of my soul. The writer of Hebrews said it this way, we have this certain hope that is like a strong, unbreakable anchor that holds our souls to God Himself. And one of the greatest truths I learned in that whole process Hope seemed to vanish for a while, and then I regained it. it. was simply this, is that the one thing I learned through my dad's death is that when things seem really dark and may cause me to doubt God, the hope that I gained when I put my faith in Jesus that was given to me, it becomes an anchor that holds me to God. And the reality is this, that God will never let go of me even when I try to let go of Him. That's grace. That's why we have hope. And it gives me peace and joy and light. And it can be yours through faith in Jesus. Let me tell you where faith starts and what Jesus said. When Jesus began to preach in his ministry, he said, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And he used the word repent, and to repent is the starting point of faith. To repent means that you change directions. It means you realize you're going one direction and it's wrong, and you change directions to go the right direction. And in this case, it means you quit living life your way, and you begin to live for God. Intellectually, it means you change your mind about God, and you trust Him instead of trusting yourself. Emotionally, it means that you realize that what you've done is wrong, and you have remorse for that. And volitionally, it simply means you make a change of your will and a choice that you want to live in a different direction. So to repent is to change direction and to start living for God instead of yourself. And none of us will do it in perfection. You will still mess up. But when you trust Jesus, the direction of your life changes. And now you want to live in a way that pleases God and not continue to embrace sin. For daddy and I, for, for us, it was coming to a place where we just surrendered to Jesus. And we said, Lord, we, we just, we give up. We want to go your way, not our way. And we receive you as Savior and Lord. And we both prayed. I don't know what he prayed. I know what I prayed or kind of, okay? But there's nothing magical in the words that you say when you pray to God. It's just a way to clarify in your heart what you really want to do. And if you want that hope that gives you peace and joy and light, no matter what comes in your life, no matter what happens, the very first step is simply to surrender your life to Jesus Christ and trust Him as Savior and Lord. And if that's what you want, we could tell Him together. So I'm just going to ask you, whether you're watching online or here, to bow your heads for just a minute. And if that's what you want, listen, listen, just would you pray something like this in your own words? Jesus, I need you. I believe you died for me. And I believe that you were raised from the dead that proves that you are Lord. Please forgive me of all my sins. I trust you. And I ask you to come into my heart and life to be my Savior and Lord. Help me now to live in a way that pleases you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me tell you something. You know, at that first Christmas, it said that the skies were filled with the glory of the angels. You know what's happening in heaven right now? For those of you that pray, it, the whole of heaven is filled with glory. Because it says that whenever one person comes to faith in Jesus, that all of heaven, the angels celebrate. I mean, they're throwing a party and your name is on the cake. And man, that is something worth shouting about. I mean, that is so good, right? 
And so I'm just, so, I want to encourage you. Man, I'm so excited for you. And I know that some of you that are watching online and some of you here, maybe you're not really sure about all this Jesus stuff. You, you've got obstacles or you've got questions or you've been hurt by a church or a pastor or people or, and you're not sure. But listen, would you do this? Would you do yourself and do us a favor? At least ask some questions and let us begin a conversation with you to try to help you work through those problems. Because I'm telling you, there is nothing greater you can do than to trust Jesus as Lord and Savior. Now, if you're a follower of Jesus, I want you to understand this, that, that your hope is there and it'll never leave you because God will never let go of you. And here is the reality I want you to take to the bank this Christmas. Even in our darkest night, hope in Jesus brings us peace joy and light. Let's pray together. Father, thank you so much for your goodness. Thank you for people who made a decision to trust and follow you today. Pray you'd fill them with hope this Christmas. For those of us that are struggling right now, I pray that we'd realize that, that as we follow you and trust you, that, that you never let go of us and we can have hope no matter how dark things seem and you can give us peace and joy and light in the midst of it. And I give you praise for that. And I pray that this Christmas, as we celebrate the birth of Jesus, we'd remember that Jesus Christ alone is the source of our hope. We give you praise and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a Merry Christmas. The greatest gift ever given at Christmas was the gift of hope. And today, if you've received that hope for yourself by putting your faith in Jesus and receiving his forgiveness, we would love to, to celebrate with you and, and help you take your next step in, in your faith journey. Uh, we we want to try to make that as easy as possible. One of the easiest ways to do that is stop by the hub. If you're in paradise, stop by the hub afterwards and, and just stop in there and say, hey, I put my faith in Jesus. We'd love to talk with you about that, pray for you, and help you know what your next step is. A, a way that we try to make it super easy for anyone. If you're not ready to talk face-to-face -face with someone yet, uh, if you would just uh, take the card that you were given you walk in. There's a QR code on there. Now that QR code will, will take you to a page that has like everything that's going on that's coming up. It's an easy place for that. But there's also also a link in there for you to, to uh, click on that link and just let us know that today I put my faith in Christ. Today I trusted Christ. Or you can let us know, hey, I've got questions. I'd like to talk with the pastor and, and, and fill out that portion of that link. And we would love to get back with you and talk with you about any questions you have and walk with you in that journey. If you're watching online, uh, the host will put a link in the chat box and, and pin it to the top so that you can let us know and we will follow up with you and help you uh, Figure out what that next step looks like and, and walk with you in that journey. You know, if you made a decision to follow Christ, I'm so excited for you because of the hope that, that we have in Jesus. It's because of Jesus that we can have peace in the midst of problems, knowing that God is with us and that he will never leave us. In a world full of hopelessness, God gave us hope when he gave us Jesus. And this is the best news we could ever get at Christmas. My mama told me something when I was growing up that has forever changed my life. She played the piano at our little church at 3rd and Pine Street for 37 years. She tried to teach me to play the piano, <laughs> but I wasn't very good. She would teach me the names of the notes, what a major key is, what a minor key is. She tried to teach me musical theory, but I was just bored. Then one day, she told me that the best news in the world is found by playing a simple scale on the piano. I had no idea what she meant, so she told me to play an eight-note scale. So I did. I said, how is that good news? And she said I played it incorrectly and that I needed to play it the other way. So I did. Again, I said, how is that good news? And she said, I played it the right way, but I needed to add the pauses. The pauses? She said, the pauses. Add them on the first, second, fourth, sixth, seventh, and last note. Now, I was frustrated and said, how can eight notes with random pauses be the best news in the world? Then I got up, walked away, and went outside. Frankly, I didn't care what she was talking about. I didn't like playing the piano anyway. 
Well, years later, my mama got sick and passed away. As I was thinking about her, I remembered what she told me about the piano. Not only that, I still remember the notes she told me to pause. The first, second, fourth, sixth, seventh, and last note. So I sat down at her piano and played the scale with the pauses. And that's when I realized the good news she was talking about. Come out here and jump. I saw that's the all thing you gotta I have a seat real quick. You just want you're sitting there and, and it's and like I, rock I think, stars. I don't dream, think Nick dream. was actually working with you. He, no. was, he was like he, he was finally like, looked so, up. I was like, thank anyway, you, Nick. So oh well. <sighs> so. 
That's like a wardrobe change. What 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 that, that dude's fast. Go ahead. And get this thing going. <laughs> hey, I These hope people you've enjoyed your time this morning and that today you leave full of hope. As we close out today, we have a few things we want to make sure you know about. And I'm going to get leave. this right because I haven't gotten right in any service yet. So I want to make sure I get it right this service. Okay. Um, January the 3rd, we are going to a new schedule for our worships for our services it's gonna be 9 30 and 11 okay starting in january 9 30 and 11 and that's because we have figured out how to get everything cleaned up a lot faster so we're going to go to 9 30 and 11 so uh, make sure you put that down if you get here at nine o'clock you can still come in but it won't start till 9 30 okay next sunday december the 27th i said february in the last service december the 27th <laughs> We are going to just offer the service online because we want our ministry leaders that work every uh, every week to be able to spend some time with their family as well as you. So um, catch it at, at 9 o'clock and 11. It is going to be family friendly. It's going to be a little shorter. And so we encourage you to do that. Uh, coming up January 10th, we start a new series uh, called uh, Break the Cycle. And this year, look. It's a new year coming right around the corner. It's a chance to make some new choices, some new decisions that will help you from, uh, you know, maybe keep you from feeling stuck in the rut or, or maybe feeling a lot like this. Poor fella. That so, was 2020 right there. That's right. In a, all that's in one a, time. That's so. a bad day. Hey, be back on January 10th for Break the Cycle. Invite someone to come and sit with you. Now, please stay, stay seated. Our ushers will come by and dismiss you by section and row. God bless you. Have a very Merry Christmas. Hey, and if you are a first-time guest, visit Hub for a gift. And a Happy no, New bye, Year. Bye, y'all. Merry Christmas.